Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for making it to this very first session of today. Um, the work I'm going to present about policy evaluation with temporal differences was done at, at the Technical University of Darmstadt together with Gerhard Norman and Jan Peters. Um, automated agents for sequential decision making under uncertainty have a plethora of applications in the real world. This includes, for example, a robot control or intelligent tutoring systems which help students learning most efficiently by providing them with the right questions at the right time and giving them personalized um, hints. Another example in healthcare is drug dose optimization. Those kind of scenarios are usually modeled as Markov decision processes. And I assume most of you are very familiar with Markov decision processes, but let me quickly go through the notation. Um, in each time step, uh, time step t, an agent picks an action at by sampling from its policy pi, which depends on the state of the current of the environment, st. It then receives the next state, st plus 1, and a reward, which are sampled from the next state distribution and the uh, reward distribution. And the goal, in general, is to find a policy pi that maximizes the expected sum of rewards discounted by discount factor gamma. While we might have a reasonable model for robotic control application, as, as soon as humans are involved, we probably don't have a reasonable model for the environment. So we assume that the state, next state distribution and the reward distribution is unknown. So we're acting in a reinforcement learning setting. The value function is an important quantity. It tells us the value of this objective function that we want to optimize given the initial state and a policy pi. So for each state, it tells us the expected sum of discounted rewards given the initial state. It play, it has, it's so important because it plays a crucial role in many reinforcement learning algorithms, such as policy iteration or actor critic approaches. But sometimes it's also of interest by itself because we can use it to estimate interesting quantities, such as taxi out times of airplanes at airports. So in this talk, the goal is or the problem setting that we're considering is policy evaluation with a linear function approximation. So we want to estimate the value function for a fixed policy given samples of the environment. More formally, we are provided with the policy that we want to evaluate, P uh, P per G, a sampling policy PS, a linear param a parameterization phi, and samples from the environment that are generated by the MDP and the sampling policy. And the goal is to find parameters of the value function estimate uh, for this policy that minimizes the mean squared error uh, to the true value function of this policy. And this uh, mean squared error is weighted by this, the stationary state distribution. The um, policy evaluation has been an active field of research for the past 25 years. And so there's a lot of, there's large collection of existing methods. And while most of them have really strong theoretical guarantees, often there is no or, or very limited empirical evaluation of those methods. And since they, are, uh, since they have been derived from very different like, point of view on this problem, it's often also not clear what the connections between those methods are um, and how they relate to, uh, relate to each other. What, kind, what are their strengths? What, uh, how, what are their similarities? What are the differences? So in, this, in the journal paper I'm pre I, I present here, we basically make two contributions. We, have what we, may, we do a survey and an empirical evaluation. In the survey, we present all the methods in a unifying framework of function approximation. While this framework has been, or a similar framework has been used in previous work, we extend it so that we can use it for all kind of uh, methods that we are considering. And we also give an overview of important existing um, extensions, such as el eligibility traces or important sampling for off-policy estimation. And we also summarize existing, like recent research on how to handle very high dimensional feature spaces. In the empirical evaluation, we compare the methods on a set of 12 benchmark tasks. And we also provide empirical evidence for questions that are of interest to practitioners. For example, um, how to choose good parameters for the algorithms, or should I normalize my features? How should I normalize my features? And we also propose an improved version of least square STD learning that has improved uh, off policy performance. Obviously, I don't have time to talk about all of those, 
but instead I will focus in the, the remainder, remainder of this talk on first giving a high-level overview of policy evaluation methods, and then I present a, a short selection of the uh, experimental results. So the methods, all these methods, um, they can be understood uh, or can be categorized according to which loss function they try to minimize. So eventually, we're interested in minimizing the mean squared error. And we could do the, uh, but this error function is not known to us. We cannot evaluate at runtime. So what, what, but what we could do is to build a sample approximation of this, given the samples that we have seen so far, and then minimize this. And in fact, some algorithms do this. But other algorithms first choose a surrogate loss function and build a sample complexity, a uh, sample approximation of this, and then minimize this one. And we will look into uh, why it is, might be reasonable to choose a different loss function. And one way to understand this is to look at the function space view of things, where each value function is basically a point in this uh, function space. And the space of all value function that we can represent with this linear parameterization that we are given is basically a linear subspace, here shown as this blue plane. So what we want to do is to minimize the mean squared error, which is the distance between the true value function v and our estimate in the linear subspace. However, we cannot evaluate it, so we build a sample approximation of it, which then amounts to basically the, the distance between the estimate that we have and the Monte Carlo estimate of our value function, which is basically taking the observed sum of discounted rewards that we have until the end or until the uh, last time set that, that we have seen averaged over all occurrences of the state that we are evaluating. However, there's a problem with this, as this uh, fu um, loss function. The problem is that it has very high variance in typical settings. So one can mitigate this issue by uh, leveraging the fact that the true value function satisfies the Bellman equation, which says that the value of the current state is the expected immediate reward plus the discounted value of the expected next state. And so intuitively, since the true value function satisfies this equation, we can also, we also try to enforce that our estimate satisfies this equation, at least approximately. So we can use the difference between the left and right hand side for our estimate uh, as a error function, which is the mean squared Bellman error. Um, but there's also a problem with this estimator because if you want to get an unbiased sample approximation of this error function, you would need a second pair of uh, reward and next state for each transition that we are observing, independent of the, of the first one that we have. And this is not typically, typically not available in practice. One can also get, uh, get rid of this requirement by looking at the projected error projected into the plane or into the linear subspace of function that we can represent. And this then amounts to minimizing or considering the mean squared projected Bellman error, which is shown uh, here. After this like, very quick overview of some of the loss functions, we can look at another dimension of how to categorize the methods. Um, and this other dimension is how do these uh, methods try to minimize the loss function that they chose. And it's actually pretty simple because the loss function, all of them, are convex and quadratic. So it's, we can either solve them analytically by setting the gradient to zero, or we can do, perform some, sort, some type of stochastic gradient descent. And depending on what of those uh, approaches the algorithm chooses, it has either runtime that is quadratic in the number of features n, or linear in the number of features n. So let's quickly look at one specific example of an algorithm. So let's look at least squares temporal difference learning, LSD for short, which basically solves or which basically minimizes the mean square projected Bellman error by setting its gradient to zero. One can easily derive the solution of this um, in a few steps of basic linear algebra, but for to get some maybe some more intuition, let's look at the geometrical interpretation of this. So what we, try, what we aim is to minimize the mean square projected Bellman error, which is shown as the solid black distance here. And it is 
easy to see that we can set this to zero if the Bellman error vector, which is here shown in red, is orthogonal to our feature space. Then this becomes zero. So you have an optimality condition that says that the inner product between all the features that we have and this uh, Bellman error vector should be zero. If you now replace this by the sample approximation, we, can, we get like a sum of the features of each state plus the one sample version of the Bellman vector, which is also known as the TD error. We can, by reshuffling or by reordering the terms, we can get a simple linear, uh, linear system, uh, system of linear equations that we can solve easily. And this works really well uh, as long as the policy that we want to evaluate is the same as the one that generated the samples that we've seen. However, in our policy estimation, those are different. So this approach doesn't work directly anymore. But it's easy to fix by, for example, taking the approach proposed by you, which um, uses importance weights to account for the different, distrib different distribution in the action choices. So we simply add importance weights to all terms that directly depend on the action, which in our case is the next state and the reward. So we get this uh, different set of uh, system of linear equations. While this uh, approach is consistent, uh, is a consistent estimator, it has the problem that, and we have shown this, that it doesn't really work well in practice. However, we can fix this very easily by a very small modification that we propose by simply adding also the importance weights to the remaining term. That does not depend on the action A, but it also doesn't harm uh, consistency properties of, uh, by adding this term. And this algorithm has much better performance in practice. Um, it, since we have, uh, re we have uh, published the paper, it was then later analyzed also, and uh, theoretically, and uh, extended to eligibility traces. We also propose a similar version to uh, a similar version of this uh, off policy, different off policy weighting strategy, which we call transition off policy weighting uh, for the least squares policy evaluation algorithm called LSPETO. So let's now look uh, quickly look at the experimental results. Uh, we want to compare the methods on uh, various benchmarks. So we picked 12 benchmarks that are diverse, but that we can still is somewhat manageable to us, so that we can compute the actual mean squared error, um, either by exactly computing the value function or by being able to approximate it with high confidence by sampling. So among the benchmarks that we chose are classical ones, such as uh, carpal swing up or uh, chain MDPs and Baird star uh, MDP. But we also, for example, include a 20-link uh, pendulum balancing task which it has a 40-dimensional uh, continuous state space. So the table here shows the overall comparison of all methods, which is we ran each method multiple times uh, with a fixed uh, set of or fixed budget of samples. And we here show the average mean squared error for each of the methods that they achieve. And blue uh, shaded uh, cells indicate that the error is close to the, up, uh, to the best one obtained for this benchmark. And the last four columns show le the least squares policy, uh, policy evaluation method and the least squares temporal difference method, both in the original off policy weighting strategy and the transition off policy weighting strategy that we propose. And we see that those have, in general, the lowest error for almost all benchmark tasks. However, and they are identical for on policy tasks. However, we see that um, for some off policy tasks, or for most off policy tasks, actually, the original off policy weighting has a very, a very high error, which is here indicated by these red cells. We can see this more clearly by looking um, at a specific example. So for example, here, we show how the error develops or changes with increasing number of samples for the different methods on a simulated card pull balancing task. So we see that, as we would hope, the transition off policy weighting strategies, or the methods with the transition off policy weighting strategies, converge very quickly to a low error. But the other or original off-policy weighting strategies have erratic behavior, and they're pretty unstable. Eventually, they will converge, but they take extremely, extremely long time. This is because they have very high variance. A different issue that we looked at is the double sampling issue. 
Remember that in order to get an unbiased estimate of the mean squared Bellman error, you need to uh, have the second set of samples, which is usually not available. But even if it is available and you use it, the results here actually show that it's beneficial just to ignore it and simply go with uh, the biased one sample version. So here we compute two different algorithms, Bellman residual minimization and residual gradient for the one sample version and the double sample version indicated by the suffix ds. And we see that the one sample versions converge much quicker than the um, double sampling version, which is quite non-intuitive because we use additional samples and additional information in the double sampling methods. So we also looked at, or we did extensive parameter studies where we looked at how the performance of the algorithms depends on the parameter settings that we use for each task. And by comparing them um, among different uh, benchmarks, we then tr uh, can assess empirically how difficult it is to pick a parameter value that works across domains. Uh, and while I don't have time to go into details here, um, it generally shows that least square CD learning and least square policy evaluation, it's quite easy to pick parameters. Let me conclude now with a few remarks. Uh, policy evaluation methods for linear function approximation can be understood well in this framework of, li of function optimization. And also our empirical results indicate that least squares policy evaluation or least squares CD learning is a good default choice for policy evaluation because they're generally robust and sample efficient. However, if you use or if you're in off policy setting, you might want to use the transition off policy weighting because um, strategy because it has it gives you way better imp uh, performance empirically. Thank you. Thank you.